So, Mark Hatcher, Dan Gaskin, you're over in the casting area. Uh, take it away with this game. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. As you can see, we're already into our game. Dan Gorilla versus Resende is Brazil versus the man from the UK who we know all about. Looking forward to getting into this one and looking forward to getting our, our first sighting, really, of Gorilla uh, since Bucharest a few... Well, it was back in December now that we last saw Gorilla who obviously had some pretty uh, intense matchups there. That one with F2 Tex is one that certainly sticks out in the memory, um, but didn't have the, the, the best of runs, hasn't had the best of seasons so far on FIFA 19, but there's something about London. There's something about Gorilla. They seem to go hand in hand, and he usually has quite a lot of success here. Yeah, if you look what Gorilla's done and the players that he's kind of beaten and the players he's faced up against in those tournaments, of course, he had some close games with Tex. He took down Emma Dasari as well uh, in the most recent Bucharest LQE. Uh, but if we look at the last time we saw Resende, Gorilla was also there. It was the Bucharest uh, Foot Champs Cup 1. And actually, Resende outplaced Gorilla. He finished top 16 there. As he gets another attempt where the keeper's going to make a double save. Nice work from Courtois. But both of these players will be looking to make that step up, Mark. They don't want to be finishing top 16, top 8. They want to get up into those semi-finals, the console finals. Really get those points under their belt. Oh, absolutely. And that's uh, what all these tournaments are about. Making sure you get those FIFA Global Series points on the board. And booking yourself, uh, putting yourself, should I say, one step closer to the FIFA E World Cup final. It's going to be a long road for a lot of these players. All the events that we have these year, this year, of course, are uh, going to make sure that it will be the best of the best to eventually end up there. But now it's going to be the Gorilla with your first chance of the attack. And you can see Ronaldinho playing on that left-hand side here for Gorilla. And he's also got N'Golo Kante, that team of the year. Kante sliding in the midfield too. Yeah, I like the addition of Kante. I think he's very good at chasing down a ball as a CDM. Very different to Vieira, of course. Vieira just is, is incredible at intercepting plays with, of course, his size and the length of those legs. He can just get a foot in. But can say I like it. If you, uh, if you like a player who just chases the ball, then he seems to fit well into your midfield. Yeah, certainly covers a lot of ground. And that pace on the card, of course, means that he can cover all that ground. A little bit more about him going forward as well, so don't be surprised to see a few shots taken. Great little fake shot there. Oh, that's fantastic stuff from Resende. He takes the lead, and it's the Brazilian Ronaldo. R9 just strikes it across goal, straight into that top left-hand corner, but it was the pass that created the space, the extra little ball, and Resende takes the lead. Yeah, and one of the things that Gorilla's always been fantastic at doing in this past couple of events has been goalkeeper movement. You can see he moved him near post there, but well read by Resende. He knows full well what Gorilla has in his locker in terms of goalkeeper movement, and he predicted it right, hammered it into that top corner. And now he gets a lead as well. But Gorilla has been very good at responding quickly when he does go a goal down. So expect him from this kickoff to be trying to push up straight away, take full advantage of some of those defenders, maybe being out slightly out of position. Interesting to see uh, Gorilla choosing to use Sergio Ramos, the team of the year card, in at right back here. So. Going to be slightly off chem, but with those stats, it's not going to affect that particular foot item too much. Interesting to see. We'll keep an eye on that one. But those back post crosses, uh, uh, back post crosses, excuse me, certainly not going to be quite as effective as a little set piece routine there from Gorilla. His name I struck that one. Unfortunately for him, it was straight down the throat of De Gea. Fairly comfortable save for him. And I think we might see that more often, and in this tournament especially, we might see kind of Varane going into right back, maybe even. Van Dijk left back. I was speaking to Boras about it, and he was saying that a lot of these fullbacks, they're very small, and he gets a second chance as well. Oh, he hits the bar! How has it stayed out? And it's so unlucky with Sunday's not gone 2 0 up there. Yeah, a lot of these fullbacks are very short, Mark, and it, it does allow for that back post header to happen. Resende has started this game. Incredibly brightly. Big save there, originally from Thibaut Courtois. The follow up hit the crossbar, and then. Gorilla managed to just about scramble it away, but he really hasn't had anything so far in this game going his way. Gorilla, the only real shot in angle was that set piece. And even that was quite a speculative effort from the Englishman. Resende really controlled the pace of this game so far, and here comes Kante now forward again. Ronaldo on the edge of the box. Ronaldo's going to play it out right to Messi. Can't quite get past Marcelo, though. And I'm impressed that Resende has found this first goal because when we did see him in that Bucharest Foot Champions Cup number one, he lacked goal scoring ability from the 12 games that he played, including legs, of course. He only found 13 goals, Mark, so a goal a game on average. Oh, oh and Gorilla almost finds the top corner there. 
But maybe Resende's looked at that and he said, all right, how do I find more goals? How am I actually going to approach these games? Do I need to be more aggressive? And he's found the lead early here. And yeah, Gorilla almost equalised there with that finesse shot. Perfectly timed for Ronaldinho, just shaved the upright. And there's Ronaldinho again, and this time, second time around, he makes no mistake. Ronaldinho with the green time finesse into that far corner. Gorilla ties it up at one all. Resende just not moving his keeper quick enough there, maybe not expecting the shot from Ronaldinho instantly. But we were seeing that day in, day out a couple of tournaments ago. Surely you've got to expect it coming here or there. Or maybe you've got, to, you've got to test the waters as well when you're gorilla. I was going to say, maybe that, that shot before, just beforehand, kind of Resende was thinking, OK, he's going to cross goal this yeah. time with the, you know, the standard finesse shot across goal. Maybe he'll change it up this time. There is that kind of constant mind games going on between players at this very, very top level. So maybe he was sort of second guessed himself a little bit and almost you know, didn't, didn't move the keeper in hope that Gorilla wouldn't go far side again. I mean, it definitely happens. I've seen a lot of times where if you, do, if you don't touch the keeper, the keeper's probably going to make a save anyway. So I don't blame him. It certainly wasn't a mistake, but at the same time, I'm sure he'll look back and say, well, if I had moved my keeper that way, it's just one of those things. Well, there's a big gap through the middle here and it's CR7 who's found it into Messi now. Great move this from Resende. He goes for the shot. You can see Gorilla again choosing to let the AI defend for him while he was moving his goalkeeper. Courtois with a good punch away here, but pressure straight back on Gorilla now after that equaliser. Gorilla favouring Rio Ferdinand over the likes of Maldini, etc. Rio Ferdinand, of course, was one of the quickest centre-backs in the game. And we did see how Maldini suffered against the likes of Mbappe in the previous, so maybe that's why Gorilla is favouring uh, Rio Ferdinand here. But at the moment, everything's been in Gorilla's half, really. Been very much behind. As we have another corner, plays it short to Kante. Yeah, Resendez looks so dangerous in and around the box. Oh, Neymar just lost control of that ball. It just slipped out of his reach. You could see the Brazilian sort of stretching and trying to regain control of it, but Gorilla now on the break from that set piece. Ronaldo manages to nutmeg one player. Oh, that was Maldini getting back in though and just applying enough pressure to Cristiano Ronaldo to win that ball back, but Gorilla looked dangerous there on the break. And because of the speed some of these foot items have now with Ronaldo, with Mbappe, we're starting to see players actually trying to just run down the wing, just trying to run through past a defender by knocking the ball ahead of them. You were easily caught up by a lot of defenders previously before these players even existed. Uh, but now you have that chance to try and break away, try and play those through balls through to the incredibly quick strikers. But at halftime, it's, it's all tied up one to one. Even though Gorilla, a lot of the play was in his side of the half, he was still kind of able to catch Resende off guard, I, I feel. Interesting. To play for. Yeah, the interesting thing for me is every time that Resende's getting sort of around 20 yards out, Gorilla's kind of letting the AI defend him. He's moving that goalkeeper straight away. He's relying on that, which is why when Resende is getting inside the box and pulling up a couple of skill moves, it's, it is creating those opportunities to strike. It's quite a risky strategy from Gorilla, I would say, to, to start moving that goalkeeper so early. However, it has saved him already in this game. It's kind of a risk-reward strategy. He might be made to look a little bit silly if it goes wrong, but he's so good at getting it right that it almost makes Resende think, when do I hit it? What, do I go for the, the shots a little bit further out? Do I wait until I see that goalkeeper move? Very interesting to watch that develop as this game goes on. And I don't blame him as well. Ronaldo can't quite get there. Great save from De Gea, but yeah, using the AI to defend here or there. It's a lot harder to beat an AI with skill moves rather than just a manual defending player who maybe struggles a little bit. But it's all about that goalkeeper movement for sure. Neymar whips this one in. Ronaldo with the header. Flashes across goal though, and that's just going to be a goal kick there. David De Gea just let that one drift across his six-yard box pretty confidently there. And now he'll clear this one upfield and... Don't be surprised to see Cristiano Ronaldo winning a lot of headers from goal kicks, but now Resende having to defend as Gorilla comes forward. Throwing on this right-hand side, it'll be taken by Neymar. That's going to be a corner one again, Marcelo deflecting that one out. Neymar stood over this one now. Whips it in once more, Cristiano Ronaldo again looking dangerous in there. However, De Gea comes out and picks that one up. Gorilla looking a little bit more lively in the second half. And, and you want to cross the ball in, you want to get it in the mixer when you've got players who have such incredible jumping stats uh, and the height as well. But at the same time, you know on the other side, the defenders also have those jumping stats. They're also equally as tall. 
So it's a weird one. I feel like you have to try and mix it up here or there, sometimes cross it in, sometimes just play it short and try and maybe use a croquetta here or there to work your way into the box. But I was, always, I was excited to see Gorilla in this tournament because after, of course, all of the light being on Tex and MS Dasari, I mean, it used to be Gorilla. He was the main man in the United Kingdom, if not in FIFA in general. And I wonder whether he wants that back. How much of a grind has he been going through? Ronaldo with a scoop turn trying to get around that corner. I think that's an interesting question. I almost feel like kind of a little bit of pressure's off of Gorilla, to be honest with you. Kind of, obviously, you know, hasn't won a tournament in the while, uh, which, I mean, sums up this the stature of the player. Like, people are talking about the fact, oh, Gorilla hasn't won a tournament. You know, people were expecting him to win tournaments every single time that he does compete. And I feel like that spotlight being shifted off of him might actually help him out a little bit, to be honest with you. But that's a great ball inside. Rio Ferdinand makes a last-ditch tackle there for Gorilla, just as things were looking dangerous, but you kind of want to see him just playing with, a, with the shackles off a little bit, like the Gorilla of old, just flying forward. But again, he had, has got some, uh, some questions to answer here in FIFA 19. We've seen how close he has been to beating some of the best. It's just if he can string together a consistent tournament for me. It just seems to be one of them is always there, whether it's Emma Stasari or Tex to take him down. Uh, but he, he did beat Mr. Sari in knockout stages uh, in Bucharest. I think it was in the quarterfinals he won, but then he went on to lose to Tex in the semi-finals. I mean, it, it was an, an unfortunate, music, yeah. unfortunate bracket for him. But yeah, I think he'll want to prove something not only to his fans, but to himself as well. But at the moment, it's Resende with the ball on the edge of the back. Bit edge of, of the box. Bit of space Kante! here. It's Kante! Oh, that's why people are using Kante. Oh, my Lord. Team of the year, Kante. His regular card does not have the ability to do that. But this team of the year, I mean, he's got a hell of a strike on him. And you can see it there. Resende goes into the lead. 2-1. Not only do his regular, does his regular card not have the ability, Patrick Vieira probably doesn't have the ability to do that either. And maybe that is why we are seeing the inclusion of Kante in a lot of these squads today. He was given the space, and he hit it, and he hit it green as well. That's what's important. Got that timing down to a tee, and now we are going to see some changes from Gorilla. You were saying, Mark, about how the fact he was letting the AI defend a little bit, he was controlling his keeper. There was no stopping that one. Yeah, there's no stopping that one. What a strike, and it's an interesting thing as well to talk about. A lot of pros, when they see Patrick Vieira, for example, arriving on the edge of the box, they almost know that he's not going to shoot. Yeah. But now you have that dilemma. If you have Ngolo Kante arriving on the edge of the box with some of his shooting stats, his on stat card is 89 shooting, which is better than the majority of strikers. You know, base card gold strikers on the game. And he has the ability to do that. It, it's so much more difficult because you have to close that down. You have to reduce that space and try and get a block in. And then that just leaves the potential for Kante to just find a pass of his own to another player. It, it creates such a dilemma. And because the, the foot item is so good all round as well, it means that you can use a chemistry style to even improve that shooting as well, if you like. I didn't actually see what chemistry style is applied, but I mean, if you put a Hunter on him, for example, he's going to be suddenly Pretty 99 decent, yeah. shooting or close to that. So it's, uh, it is a scary thing to consider with a lot of these Team of the Year foot items. As De Gea once again, just comfortably bringing that one down. I've seen keepers punch it out from there before. Glad, <laughs> glad that they're learning. Didn't punch it out. Certainly kicked it out, though, and gave possession straight back to Gorilla. then. 15 minutes left in game. This is the first leg, of course, if you're joining us. Neymar in and around the box. Looks for that finesse shot, but Kante closes down that space. Corner again now to Gorilla. Now he is mixing up a little bit. Rio Ferdinand on the edge of the box, but killing Mbappe with the interception here and might be able to release Pele, who was just looking to get round the corner. Well defended, though, by Gorilla. But look at this, so look at the space here. Pele approaching the edge of the box for Ram with the interception. And this is really starting to open up as we approach the last 10 minutes or so of this game. Pele now around the corner. Ronaldo's running onto it. El Tornado inside. Couldn't quite squeeze between the two defenders, but Gorilla looking dangerous. Goes for the early finesse shot there, but De Gea, that's pretty comfortable for the Spaniard. Yeah, not quite going to catch Resende off guard like he did with Ronaldinho that time. It was far enough out where he had time to read it. Not hit as quickly as the shot from Ronaldinho. Maybe Gorilla needs to switch things up, try and find a different way through. But he also needs to be careful because he might leave himself slightly vulnerable at the back here. You can see Mbappe now on the pitch making those runs down the right wing. And even Marcelo's joining the attack as it's Pele. 
to Ronaldo. Nice, but not good enough. Nice little tornado for the volley, but good goalkeeper movement from Gorilla meant that Courtois was right in behind that one. Unfortunately for him, Messi just couldn't quite get his foot over the ball to control that driven pass into one of his strikers. And now Resende, I mean, at this point in the game, if he scores again and Gorilla concedes again, it's going to make the second leg so much more difficult. The line is held strong by the defence, though. Possession will be turned back over from that offside call. I do feel like the, the use of the offside trap is even more important now with some of these Team of the Year cards and how quick they are. Mbappe is just so rapid behind your defence that you need to be on the ball. But if you do it wrong, it can be very detrimental to you. A few minutes left, though. Maybe one last chance for Gorilla going forward. Here is Cristiano Ronaldo. Then you can see the run outside of him from Lionel Messi, and he's going to be found now. The Argentinian inside the box. Croqueta to just get inside his man by just a moment of space. Gorilla looking dangerous here. Hill to hill. Messi into Cristiano Ronaldo. Enter the box. Luka Modric strikes it. Great block, though, from Resende. And it looks like he's going to take a lead now into our second leg. Two to one, the final score in our first leg. Resende with the one goal advantage. And of course, wrapping that Ozil shirt as well. Always extra pressure when you're on, under some form of organization, as most of these FIFA players should be now. I mean, arguably, all 32 of these players, top players in the world. But they're all playing for those Global Series points, Mark. That, that's what they want. Yes, OK, the prize money is extra money in your pocket, but they want to get to those finals. Yeah, it's all, it's all about the, the points here in London. And uh, every single player who's on that stage at the moment is going to be looking to pick those up. And, as we look at the goals and the replays from that first leg, I want to talk about the importance for some of the players who haven't qualified for all of these events, how important they become as we go further and further into the season. Every single tournament, the pressure gets more and more because they have to get those points on the board. Otherwise, they quite simply will not make it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you look at Mo Alba, who's qualified for all five events that we've had thus far. You have to imagine that he's going to be there or thereabouts when we get to the end of things. But for a player like Resende, this is his third event. I think he's missed out on a couple. He needs to start getting some higher placements so he can keep up with the likes of Mo Alba, who is qualifying every single tournament. I mean, there's a lot of notable players as well, Dan, who, who have yet, we've yet to see. I mean, I believe that uh, Tass just managed to qualify for his first event, so that's huge for him. Um, and that means that that first tournament that he gets to I mean, the pressure is going to be on him even more because he needs to place well in order to get those Global Series ranking points on the board to give himself a chance of quite simply making it through. And that's what it's all about. You know, a player like Tass, we talked about him, his successes in FIFA 17, FIFA 18, and to not see him at these tournaments, he, he struggled to adapt to FIFA 19. And it just shows the level of competition now that we have in the FIFA esports scene. Yeah, everyone, I mean, everyone's just getting better and better every single time we have a tournament. They, they seem to be finding new ways of kind of getting in and out of the meta, trying to find those goals, trying to find, uh, break down their opponents. And, and considering that first game, I mean, Gorilla, maybe a little bit more from him going forward, a bit more creativity. He played well, but he just needs to get a, a little extra something, something. Maybe try and get a few more crosses in back post, for example. I feel, I feel like sometimes in midfield, it, it rushes that pass forward a little bit too much. We see, you know, when he used to play that 4-1-2-1-2 2 narrow, you had those options, you had that cam in there, you had those two strikers. You can kind of fire the ball in from your midfield into the cam, into the strikers. And his quick passing is what he was known for, moving that ball quickly in and around the box. But with the 4-2-3-1, uh, I feel like sometimes he tries to fire it into uh, to the, to the wide cams a little bit too quickly and like, the ball gets intercepted. So maybe just carry the ball a little bit more with those midfielders. Try and get the ball up the pitch before he turns on that guerrilla style pass in and, and looks for those openings. Um, but I mean, Resende, we have to give him a huge amount of credit there in that first leg. He, he took his chances when they came and he got a little bit lucky towards the end of the game and sort of, you know, held on a little bit was guerrilla was looking good. But heading into this second leg, I mean, what does guerrilla have to do to turn this one around? I mean, the thing for Gorilla, he's playing very quickly out from the back because the, he's not having the kind of domination of possession. He's just sitting back quite a lot and then he's trying to rush out of his defense. He's, and he's just trying to instantly get that ball up the pitch. Maybe just pass it around from left back to right back, work the pitch a little bit, wait for one of those CDMs to actually have a little bit more space. And then it's going to be harder for Resende to make one of those interceptions with Kante because Kante's so quick across the pitch. He's everywhere. Well, we're in, into our second leg. As you can see, just the one goal, the difference between the two teams, and it's going to be Resende. I believe it's actually might be Gorilla who's playing in the red hit on the Arsenal kit. 
As we say, one goal between the two players, not much at all. In FIFA 19, you've seen bigger comebacks. Unfortunately for Gorilla, he was on the end of one. With Bucharest against F2 Tex, but he's known for making these comebacks. And here in London, he's going to be looking to do exactly the same. It's Resende from the kickoff again. Just applying that pressure, just trying to work that ball. He's on the edge of the box, but he doesn't want to hit it. We saw what Kante did last game, but instead, he's trying to look for one of those strikers to actually make their way a little bit further. But I think you're right, Gorilla playing in the Arsenal kit. I, I believe he is an Arsenal fan as well. So you were saying, what does he need to do? Well, uh, maybe it's just pay homage to which team he actually supports. We've seen Tex do it. Maybe it'll work for Gorilla here. It's definitely what he used to play, and we was having a lot of success. And speaking of success, Neymar, with that finesse on his right foot, has the recipe for success here for Gorilla. Finds that top corner, the perfect start here for the Englishman. Yeah, went near post there off the keeper. Maybe wasn't quite expecting it, even though Neymar was on his right foot there. Oh, maybe the keeper thought he was just going to try and smash that one into the top left-hand corner, but that's the perfect way for Gorilla to start. It was something a little bit different as well. He did play up the pitch very quickly, similar to how he was in the, in the previous game. But it's worked for him that time. He found more space than he was usually. Maybe Resende a little bit slow off the blocks in this game. Wasn't in the same positions to kind of block those finesse shots from outside the box. So back to square one then. Essentially tied up at nil-nil as far as aggregate score is concerned. And you feel like the next 15, 20 minutes in game here is going to be vital to how this one turns out. And it's Gorilla with Neymar here. He's trying to formulate another attack, tries to slide that one into Mbappe now. He's on that left-hand side for him as well. But Resende now on the counter-attack here with Cristiano Ronaldo. He's inside the box and oh, he's going to be dropped. Referee does not give anything though. Oh, a moment of controversy here. No contact on the ball for sure. Shoulder to shoulder. My granddad would tell me to get up if that happened when I was playing. And it's going to have to be the same for Cristiano Ronaldo as well. Just take it on the chin and carry it on. But Gorilla going forward again in the red and white Arsenal strip against the Ozil team of Resende. Maybe trying to rub things in a little bit there? Who knows? No, hey man. I'm an Arsenal fan and I'm pretty sure that Meza Ozil's not going to be hanging around too long if... Uh... Unai Emery has his way. However, back into the game. Ronaldo now for Gorilla, who's looked a lot more confident in this second leg. Moving the ball nicely now. A couple of ball rolls. Resende, that's a great ball through and a fantastic touch. Just showed too much of it. So Sergio Ramos, though, inside the box. I thought R9 was just going to burst into that space and have an opportunity to have a strike at goal. But that touch just took it too close to Ramos. As Neymar strikes one. To Haya forced into the save. A lot of first touch football from Gorilla now, instantly playing those passes, not allowing Resende to press him as much. And by doing that, it's bringing a lot of Resende's players out of position and giving him the chance to actually strike at goal now, Gorilla. He's really starting to find a fluid motion here. And chances are going to start to come if he can continue to, to do so. Such focus on the faces of both players at the moment. I do, I have to say, FIFA is. One of the esports where you cannot let slip any moment of focus. If you stop focusing for just a second, it's, suddenly it's so a pass can go amiss. And that pass could lead to a goal, for example. So intense, the focus, as you say, Dan. And it's those moments in games which really can change the outcome. It's the difference between a win and a loss. And oh, and there's going to be a goal here. A beautiful fake shot to create the space. And Gorilla started this one well, but that's a little moment of magic from Resende. He takes the lead again. And that's one of the goals that really hurts when you're defending well for the majority, and then you just let one or two of those passes get past you, which maybe you could have blocked off. But a really nicely worked goal by Resende. And he was delighted with that one. I heard the scream from here. Beautiful fake shot there from Cristiano Ronaldo. Just a regular fake shot there to create just enough space to get the strike away. Buries it, makes no mistake in front of goal. Now Gorilla finds himself behind once more, and Resende back into the lead. I mean, I'm just confused at this point. The crowd are singing, We love you, City. There's an Arsenal kit on the board. Resende's badge is an Arsenal badge. It's all getting to me here on set. I'm getting a bit overwhelmed, I'm going to be honest. Resende's blue, mate. <laughs> Thank you. 
Messi then coming forward for Asende, having just taken that lead. Ronaldo drops it back to Kante. Kante back around the corner now. Neymar, Ooh. beautiful little skill move. He's twisting and turning, but he, he can twist and turn as much as you want. Patrick Vieira sometimes is just... He's too big to get past, and he makes the tackle, and now Gorilla's going to come forward again. Was that a skill move or was that ballet? That was one of the quickest turns I've ever seen on FIFA. Unreal stuff, but yeah, Gorilla going forward again. He needs to come back from behind for the third time here. The only time I've seen a man move that quickly was Richard Buckley on the dance floor. No, oh, he moves so fast, and doesn't he's he? Smooth as anything, mate. Smooth as silk. Neymar now for Gorilla again. Oh, oh the crossbar. Oh, the rebound falls. Marcelo. Not sure how much of the ball he got there. Ronaldo couldn't make contact, and now Resende flies forward again. I mean, look at all the players as well. Hullet making a, a deep run there. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the ball, so he's going to have to work back into that CDM position, which is going to leave space now for Gorilla going forward. He can see that he has a little bit of a gap. Nice fake pass. Great Gets ball. one more. It's Mbappe! I think we're going to be screaming that name a lot this tournament. 3-3 then, 3-3 between these two players, Gorilla answers back once more. The story of this game so far has been Resende will get a goal advantage and Gorilla will come roaring back. The finesse shot once more, found the space for it and just got it up and over the goalkeeper to be honest with you. It wasn't right into the corner but Kylian Mbappe again, we said it a lot as you say Dan. He's the player, God he looks good in an Arsenal shirt doesn't he? We can only dream. We really can. Imagine making a signing during January. Oh, we won't get into it. We won't get into it. But yeah, Gorilla has done it again. But now he just needs to break this kind of back and forth. And he needs to go ahead. He caught Resende slightly off guard. I said that run from Hula had left the midfield a little bit open and Gorilla took full advantage of it. As those CDMs are so good at kind of sitting on the edge of the box sometimes and stopping those finesse shots from happening. You do have to be careful when you do press like LB and pass, for example, which does force those runs from those oh, CDMs. Great ball. great ball. Oh, beautiful stuff from Resende. Oh, whatever you can do, Gorilla, I can do better. Every time he gets back into it, Resende goes up the other end and takes the lead again. Great little extra pass there from Neymar. Gorilla kind of gets the right way with the goalkeeper, to be honest, but just left too much of a gap there at that near post. And Cristiano Ronaldo. Is the man who puts Resende back into the lead. What a game we have here. I mean, Resende is so good at just carving open his opponent, it would seem. He always finds that last pass. Remember first game of the day where we were, we saw those players who just couldn't get that last pass. Resende seems to be finding it every single time. Very aware of where his players are moving on the pitch. Very impressive. But ultimately, the important factor, he has that goal lead. Whereas for Gorilla, for a fourth time now, he needs to come back from behind. Well, he's done it three times. And you wouldn't put it past him to get a fourth on the board. And you can hear a lot of players now, your real intensity sort of, as the day goes on and players get more and more through the Swiss format into games where they start to mean even more. And, you know, we might start seeing, you know, tournaments on the lines for some of these players. You can hear the screams, you can hear the intensity, you're really starting to rise now. And here at the Gfinity Arena, obviously we've got a lot of games still to come today. But much as we were at the start of this game, it's now one goal between the two teams. I don't think Gorilla will feel like he's too far behind. He knows he has the ability to come back. He just needs to stop these goals coming in from Resende. Stop allowing these final balls. Maybe, maybe a little bit more aggression with his centre-backs. Maybe he's trying to control his goalkeeper a little bit too early, so he's not focusing on those centre-backs, but somehow he's managed to put another one in. Whew. I think we found the way that Gorilla's going to be getting goals. Edge of the box finesse. Resende cannot get near it. Is he moving his keeper? Is he bringing him out slightly? Because it does seem to be the knocked difficult over. Years, the difficult years, he's hit them so quickly that it's almost the reaction time of Resende isn't quite there to, to move the goalkeeper quick enough. Gorilla's just catching him off guard with these finesse shots. And surprise, surprise. <laughs> Gorilla's back into the lead by one goal after Resende. Sorry, Gorilla's back on equal terms after Ascende was previously ahead. And now he needs to find one of those chances to go ahead. He desperately needs to go ahead. He can't afford to keep going behind because eventually the clock's just going to run out on him. And he could find himself losing the game. For Ascende, goalkeeper movement clearly is something he needs to look at. Big space. Ronaldo on that right-hand side and 
Oh, it's just following the storybook at the moment. Resende goes back into the lead. Five to four now on aggregate. And I mean, I don't think any of us are even going to pretend that you are vulnerable from kickoff. Those defenders do seem to do whatever they want to do, and you have to be maybe slightly more aggressive, use those offside traps, try and press, sometimes even take a foul. But Resende's taken full advantage of it and found a response straight away. Can Gorilla do exactly the same? Right then. Resende back up by one. How long is it going to take for Gorilla to equalise once again? Neymar now coming forward for Gorilla. Round the corner, Messi looking for that first time finesse shot again. Did not time it well though, and it flies wide at the upright. So Resende just has a moment here to kind of reset a little bit, just calm everything down. But Gorilla with the pressure, Resende's giving this one away. CR7, round the corner, Messi. Finally, Resende moves the goalkeeper. And he makes a comfortable save after Lionel Messi was in acres of space well, the to thing. strike that one. Gorilla hasn't really had to change his attack because Resende's not been moving to adjust. But now on the other side, Resende's doing it again. He's just carving his opponent open. Ronaldo has the shot, but he passes it back to Hullet. And he just resets a little bit. But he's oh, going to give it away. Again. And now on attack, are we going to see maybe a near post shot from Gorilla? Because Resende is definitely going to be expecting this far corner finesse. Oh, look at Ronaldo. Ronaldo's battling there, but Maldini was battling as well. Kante wins it. Oh, somehow Resende comes out with that ball. You can see the pressure has been increased here by Gorilla, but that's just leaving space at the back for Ronaldo to strike it. Big save from Thibaut Courtois. And that was almost just because of Kante not quite making that tackle as well. It was one thing I was going to say is very different between Kante and Vieira as Kante seems to be winning that ball back so much further up the pitch. Whereas usually Vieira is making those interceptions a little bit further back. And now this is a three on three. Messi's got the ball on the right. It does whip oh, in. It's free. Space. Neymar! Neymar ties it up once again. Oh, what a game we have here. It's a timed header as well. You love to see it. He hits it green and we're all tied up at five to five. Acres of space for Neymar. But look at this. The keeper is slightly moved. But credit to Gorilla, he has not just simply pressed the shoot button there thinking this is a guaranteed goal. He's timed it and he's directed it right into that top corner. OK. 5-5 then. Nothing between these two players. I really do feel if Gorilla can get the next goal, but this, this could be his tie though. Resende keeps going to the lead, Gorilla keeps having to answer back. If Gorilla can go into the lead, I just feel like that puts Resende on the back foot. I mean, Resende keeps getting ahead and getting pegged back. He's kind of has that sort of positive mentality at the moment. And now Gorilla just needs to get stuck in here. Don't allow a nice early goal for Resende to instantly respond like he has done a couple of times already. Great, Varane makes the interception. That's, That's huge for Gorilla. But Kante is there yet again, Mark. Here's our nine. Trying to get around the corner. Messi's going to be pushed off the ball there by Marcelo. Kante now coming forward. You can see the pause being cued by Gorilla. He's thinking of changes. Maybe fresh legs. Maybe a little formation change to try and win this game. Both these players currently one and one in the Swiss format. I mean, the way this game's going, it feels like it's going to be Gorilla's. He's come back every oh, single time. Messi! Oh, he's done it! He's got it to the lead! For the first time in the tie, Gorilla takes the lead. And it's Lionel Messi on that left foot with another finesse shot. But talk about resilience. It takes a lot of mental game to be able to respond that many times from a goal behind, to then go ahead. And Gorilla taking full advantage of Resende, not being the best at goalkeeper movement. Not to say he's bad at it, of course, he's got this far. He's an incredible player, but Gorilla has noticed a weakness and he's taking advantage of it. All right then, Resende. Can you do it, Gorilla? Can you find an equaliser and come back from behind here? Still plenty of time left in this game, to be honest with you. 20 minutes left in game. As well as some stoppage time here. Resende's not happy about something, just double checking with the admins, but either way, I mean, I wouldn't be happy if I had just gone a goal up five times in a row to then go behind 6-5.
Remember as well, everyone home watching at the moment, let us know who you think is going to win this tight. Use that hashtag Gfinity FIFA. Tweet at Gfinity. We want to know what you think is the result of this game. Maybe we've got some clairvoyants out there who might be able to uh, shed a little bit of light on things. Defensive style for Gorilla to drop back. Just trying to absorb some of that pressure now, try and close this game out. And that's something that Gorilla's very good at doing. He's very good at closing out games, Mark. As I've been really impressed with, uh, I think what, what sets some of the best players from the, some of the just good players is closing out games. I mean, we saw oh, it earlier, sure. earlier today in the Rocky match versus Gold Machine. There was the ability for that game to finish in favor of Rocky if he had just held that ball a little bit longer, if he closed that game out. He didn't. He allowed Gold Machine to get back into it. He allowed Gold Machine to regain possession, and Gold Machine punished him for it. Gorilla, I feel, is one of those players who wouldn't allow that to happen. A very smart head on him. I mean, he has let it happen. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, he's done in the past. He's seen games out very successfully, but in FIFA 19, he has let some of these leads slip. Look at the Tex game. I mean, Tex, obviously, an incredible player back in Bucharest. You know, he's won a couple of uh, tournaments already in FIFA 19, but he let that one slip. He had a pretty commanding lead going into the second leg, and he didn't see it out. So, well, something for us to certainly keep an eye on as the tournament goes on is, can Gorilla start closing out these results? It's it's going to be an interesting one for him, and I think it, it really is a key to his success this, uh, this season, this tournament. Yeah, I, I think for him it, it's just about kind of resilience and kind of knowing what he's able to do as a player. I think maybe lack of patience is why we've seen him not close out games as well against the likes of Tex, but also the fear of going up against a player like Tex. I mean, it's hard to just sit back and absorb pressure against someone like Tex. So you have to go forward, you have to go for that goal. Whereas Resende is not Tex, right? Resende does not have the ability that Tex does, if I'm completely honest. Resende is a great player. However, a player like Tex has a lot more to offer in terms of his versatility and how he can attack. He can hit you with skill moves, he can hit you with crosses, he can hit you with finesse shots, whatever he needs to get the ball in the net. So then you're naturally going to be scared as a player like Gorilla. So he, he kind of went for goals and he was punished for it. Maybe he learned a lesson from that though, maybe. I hope he did. I certainly hope he did. And uh, he's done well to stay in this game, to be honest with you. We're just uh, waiting for confirmation to see uh, exactly what's going to be going on the stage at the moment. As soon as we can get back into the game, of course, we will. Uh, we've got lots of games going on at the moment, though, Dan. Swiss, uh, Swiss format means that we've got thousands of games going on at the moment. Thousands is a lie. I'm going to lie to you at home. It's not thousands. It's uh, eh, how many players we've got here? 32, 32 players. So we've got... 32 games, 16 games. There we go, we got there. We got there in the end. I'm so well terrible done. Well Sorry, done. everybody. Uh, I, why do I always do maths as well? I like, no I've idea. never been good at it. I've never been good at it. And I, I we have some incredible players here. Uh, the fact that we see these two players on one and one at the moment in the Swiss, they've already taken losses. And I think I touched on it right at the start of the show, right? We, we have 32 incredible players. There is going to be no easy games oh. here today. You cannot expect during Swiss to be like, oh, well, I'll get an easy game. Even Tex went 0 1 down in the Swiss. I mean, that shows how hard this tournament really yeah. is and the sheer caliber of players and the things we've got players who are sitting at home who are so close to qualifying for these events we've got Boras on the desk who is almost qualifying for events himself the like, we've got Emma Sari not even here who he won, won the last tournament the last tournament here in London it's crazy it's crazy there's a lot of a lot a lot of talent I mean another player that we we haven't mentioned Joxan Joxan took home the uh, the first event of the year, uh, you know, and he looked really good. He got to the finals of the PlayStation. He got to the cross console finals. He's not here, so it just shows the level of competition. And it seems like every single year, you know, more and more players are coming into competitive FIFA. More and more players are making their names and qualifying for these events. And not only do we see new names, it means that some of the old names that we expect to see here sort of fall away a little bit. I mean, Janos this is the first time we've seen him here. Uh, this, uh, this in FIFA 19, so excited to see him back, but it just becomes so much more tough. And I think it shows that those players at the top at the moment, at the top of the, the leaderboards as far as the, the Global Series ranking points and, and tournament wins in FIFA 19, their consistency cannot be understated. To be consistent in such a competitive environment, it's unbelievable. It really is. And it's just incredible to see. I think it's what these players go through as well to qualify for these tournaments, how much FIFA they actually have to play. Uh, considering they play these qualifiers over the weekend, which is what nine rounds of Swiss, um, and also play and the knockout, 30 yeah. games of weekend league and yep. the knockout stages as well. I mean, there is a lot of FIFA to play. So it's not just the fact that they, they've got this resilience to actually get here, but it's just that they've got that focus for that many games. Like, I cannot stress enough. Like, I have commentated on other esports, <laughs> and FIFA as a 1v1 environment is so stressful for a player yeah. that you really have to admire those who are right at the top. And you, you speak about Joxan not being here, for example. I mean, maybe he took a qualifier off. 
he Let's take a break. He, yeah. he got that many ranking points from winning the first event. He was probably like, actually, I'll take a week off here. Yeah, uh, it's I, a lot I of travel. To I, be don't, fair. I don't need this one. He has to go from America to England. Maybe you'll go for if there's a qualifier in America. Maybe you'll go for that problems, one though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, he gets blown one. out here. It's yeah, fine. Oh, it's a hard life, isn't probably, it? Probably, probably really premium. Life. Maybe first class. <laughs> you know what it's like. He's won a tournament. He's got plenty of money behind him now. That's true. That's true. Um, we're still in economy. Yes. And always will be. But yes. never mind. Uh, we're waiting, to, of course, to see. We're trying to see exactly what's going on at the moment. Looks like the players are trying to get it resolved. Uh, looking across at the moment, the atmosphere in here good, is good today, Dan, as well, isn't it? As I say, the atmosphere, the, sort of the tension seems to hype up uh, the further we get into the Swiss format and the more games become meaningful, to be honest with you. You know, you can only lose three goals, I believe. Uh, three games, excuse me. Uh, before you are out of the Swiss style format. So it looks like we're back into this one. Finally, apologies for the little delay there. Apologies for having to listen to us waffle for a moment as well. It's always a scary insight when we get a little bit of time to start talking to each other. You never know what's going to come out, but to set this one up, you can see the aggregate score in the top left-hand corner. Six to five at the moment. Gorilla taking the lead for the first time as we are in our second leg as well. And now it's up to Resende to try and find an opening, create something here and get back into the game. And he is finding a lot of space in those midfield positions. He is finding his way onto the edge of the box. Because Gorilla's offering it up a little bit, but Gorilla hot on the heels, making sure he's oh, clicking down that right stick. But Resende gets an interception. Pelé! Oh, oh. big save from Courtois. Using every single inch of that six foot six frame to claw that one out. Ball falls to the edge of the box here to Maldini into Hullet! Big save comes in from Courtois once again. And Thibaut Courtois has done the business here for Gorilla. And Resende, for some reason, seems to be changing up his attack a little bit. He seems to be trying to counter Gorilla's finesse shots with finesse shots of his own, but if he looks back at the goals he's actually scored, they've been kind of quick passes in the midfield around the defense of Gorilla, catching him off guard a little bit. And that's got some space out here, though, with Eusebio. Yeah, Eusebio fresh on the pitch as well here for Resende. Pelé on the pitch as well, Hullet, that's a beautiful ball, oh, but it's a great finish as well. I always said he should do finesse shots more. Created that opportunity. And Resende ties it up here, six to six now, and just eight in-game minutes left, plus stoppage time. You get the feeling again that we might well be going to extra time. I feel like Gorilla, because he's kind of always plauded as being the best goalkeeper mover we see in FIFA 19, He's always going to take those a little bit harshly when he hasn't read it quite correctly, hasn't moved that keeper in time. I mean, that wasn't even a green time finesse mark. It was just bog standard finesse, which are still fantastic, of course. But if the keeper was moved, probably was saved. Uh, but what, what an incredible game. I mean, a, a very different game to what we saw in the first game of the day that we commentated, where it was very cagey, really struggling to find ways through the defense, whereas both of these players just seem to be finding ways to score left, right, and centre, Mark. Yeah, the finesse shot opportunity, obviously one of the best ways to these pros, to, what best way for these pros to score. Excuse me as I put my teeth back in there. In FIFA 19, and as soon as they do have the opportunity to, to let one of those finesse shots go, they, they will take it. Now we're tied up at six to six. As you can see in the top left as well, changes for Resende, Kylian Mbappe on the pitch. We saw the difference he's made so many times already in this in this tournament. And here he is on this left-hand side. He's already streaking away from his man. Ball inside, Rude Hulley on the edge of the box. Great ball again, is Eusebio onside? He is onside! And look at the reaction from Resende. But on the other side, look at the heartbreak for Gorilla. Considering he came back five times from behind, finally took the lead to then just be punched twice quickly like that by Resende. Just pass onto pass onto pass. You think Hullet's going to hit it? No. Plays that one more in Eusebio near post. Uh, my question is, is Kylian Mbappe's team of the year card the greatest super sub of all time? I mean, because he's... every single time he has come on for a player, he has created something, he's done something. And again, it was him down that left-hand side, just sprinting away, found a beautiful pass back inside, the extra pass again from Resende across, and the finish was sublime as well. I mean, it's, I mean, it's all set up for a grandstand finish here. Gorilla, he's been behind a few times in this game. He has to come back once more. Is it one time? Too many, though. I mean, looking at his face, you've got to feel like, does he even believe himself that he can come back here? 
I'd like to think, yes, every player should believe in themselves, but when it starts to get to these final few minutes of the game, you always feel like you're not going to get there. And then your head starts going into the places of, oh, I'm one and two in the Swiss. That means I can only lose one more game. I can't afford to lose another game after this. Whereas you need to stay focused on the game in hand. There's still a chance for Gorilla. Deep breath. Here we go again then, Gorilla from the kickoff. Still has a little bit of time to play with here. Might have maybe one, maybe two attacks left in this game to create a chance. Neymar now, Kante though for Resende. Wins the ball back. And look at all the space here that Eusebio has just running through the middle. He can end it here, Eusebio! Resende is up by two. Gorilla had to go for it. He had to go for it, and the space was there for Eusebio. And Resende made no mistake. It's one of those things, he, he commits men forward, of course. It's a shame that he was caught with his pants down, essentially. The defenders just not in their positions that they should be because they were looking for that goal. And now you've got to feel like surely this is impossible for Gorilla. He'd need a goal instantly here and then would have to hope he could win the ball back. As Resende just brings Gorilla down here. It's, it's a, smart, Bruce. a smart thing to do. Run down that clock a little bit. We talk about closing, closing out games and Resende seems to have done just that. And I mean, the mental game in that 1v1 with Eusebio as well. Which it's way so do you tough. go? Which yeah. way the keeper's going to go? Neymar then for Gorilla goes for the finesse shot. I think it's just a bit of desperation. I think you can see it in the player cams there. Headsets off for Gorilla. He knows this one is pretty much done bar a miracle. Resende's probably looking to rub salt into the wounds now as he comes away. But it really has been an insane game. The amount of times that Gorilla managed to come back from behind, and I mean, there might be time for one more here for Resende. Goes around the corner. Oh, he strikes the post. But it's a great, uh, it's a great example of the mental game again, Dan. Being able to keep your head in the game and come back from behind and find these goals when it matters. Resende will pick up the win, but I believe we're going to be going into another game pretty soon. I think we've got Cody the finisher.